the discussion we have said what emerges from the aforesaid discussion is summarized as on a proof of demand and acceptance of illegal gratification by a public servant as a fact in issue by the prosecution is a sine qua non in order to establish the guilt of the accused public servant under section 7 and 13 1 d 1 and 2 of the act b in order to bring home the guilt of the accused the prosecution has to first prove the demand of illegal gratification and the subsequent acceptance as a matter of fact this fact in issue can be proved either by direct evidence which can be the nature of oral evidence or documentary evidence further the fact in issue namely the proof of demand and acceptance of illegal gratification can also be proved by circumstantial evidence in the absence of direct oral or documentary evidence in order to prove the fact in issue namely the demand and acceptance of illegal gratification by the public servant the following aspects have to be borne in mind one if there is an offer to pay by the bribe giver without there being any demand from the public servant and the latter simply accepts the offer and receives the legal gratification it is a case of acceptance as per section 7 of the act in such a case there need not be a prior demand by the public servant to on the other hand if the public servant makes a demand and the bribe giver accepts the demand and tenders the demanded gratification which in turn is received by the public servant it is a case of obtainment in the case of obtainment the prior demand of legal gratification emanates from the public servant this is an offense under section 13 1c 1 and 2 of the act in both cases of 1 and 2 above the offer by the bribe giver and the demand by the public servant respectively have to be proved by the pub prosecution as a fact in issue in other words mere acceptance or receipt of an illegal gratification without anything more would not make it an offense under section 7 or section 13 1d 1 and 2 respectively of the act therefore under section 7 of the act in order to break up the offense there must be an offer which emanates from the bribe giver which is accepted by the public servant which would make it an offense similarly a prior demand by the public servant were accepted by the prior giver and it turned there is a payment made which is received by the public servant would be an offense of obtainment under section 13 1t and 1 and 2 of the act presumption of fact with regard to the demand and acceptance or obtainment of an illegal gratification may be made by a court of law by way of an inference only when the foundational facts have been proved by relevant oral and documentary evidence and not in the absence there of on the basis of the material or record the court has the discretion to raise a presumption of fact while considering whether the fact of demand has been proved by the prosecution or not of course a presumption of fact is subject to rebuttal by the accused and in the absence of rebuttal presumption stands in the event the complainant turns hostile or has died or is unavailable to let in his evidence during trial demand of illegal gratification can be proved by letting in the evidence of any other witness who can again let in evidence either orally or by documentary evidence or the prosecution can prove the case by circumstantial evidence the trial does not abate nor does it result in an order of acquittal of the accused public servant in so far as section 7 of the act is concerned on the proof of the facts in issue section 20 mandates the court to raise a presumption that the illegal gratification was for the purpose of a motive or reward as mentioned in that section the said presumption has to be raised by the court as a legal presumption or a presumption in law of course the said presumption is also subject to rebuttal section 20 does not apply to section 13 1d 1 and 2 of the act we clarify that the presumption in law and the section 20 of the act is distinct from presumption of fact referred to in point e as the former is a mandatory presumption while the latter is discretionary in nature in view of the aforesaid discussion and conclusions we find that there is no conflict in the three judge bench decisions of this court in b jairaj and p satyanarayan murthy with the three judge bench decision in m nursing rao with regard to the nature and quality of proof necessary to sustain a conviction for offenses under section 7 or 13 1d 1 and 2 of the act when the direct evidence of the complainant or primary evidence of the complainant is unavailable owing to his death or any other reason position of law when a complainant or prosecution witness turns hostile is also discussed and the observations made above would accordingly apply in light of section 154 of the evidence act in view of the aforesaid discussion we hold that there is no conflict between the judgments in the aforesaid three cases accordingly the question referred for consideration of the
this constitution bench is answered as under in the absence of evidence of the complainant within bracket direct or primary oral or documentary evidence close bracket it is permissible to draw an inferential deduction of culpability or guilt of a public servant under section 7 and 13 1d read with section 13 2 of the act based on other evidence adduced by the prosecution we direct that individual cases may be considered before the appropriate bench after seeking orders of honorable the chief justice of india before we conclude we hope and trust that the complainants as well as the prosecution make sincere efforts to ensure that the corrupt public servants are brought to book and convicted so that the administration and governance becomes unpolluted and free from corruption in this regard, God, we would like to reiterate what has been stated by the court in Swatantra Singh versus State of Haryana. Court: Corruption is corroding like cancerous lymph nodes, the vital veins of the body politic, social fabric of efficiency in the public service, and demoralizing the honest officers. The efficiency in public service would improve only when the public servant devotes his sincere attention and does his duty diligently, truthfully, honestly, and devotes himself assiduously to the performance of the duties of his post. The reputation of corruption. would gather thick and unchaseable clouds around the conduct of the officer and gain notoriety much faster than the smoke the above has been reiterated in ab bhaskar rao versus cbi by quoting as under from the case of state of mp versus shambhu dayal court it is difficult to accept the prayer of the respondent that a lenient view be taken in this case the corruption by the public servants has become a gigantic problem it has spread everywhere no facet of public activity has been left unaffected by the stink of corruption. it has deep and pervasive impact on the functioning of the entire country large scale corruption retards the nation building activities and everyone has to suffer on that count unquote we place on record our appreciation of all learned senior counsel as well as counsel and instructing counsel including learned asts who have assisted the court now so thank you for giving me the opportunity to write in some cup you know miss or miss nalbrak no problem for ever <laughs> 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 <laughs>